yard to feed my lambs family We are a family Our hearts are bound together in love We are a family oh, oh, oh. Heart to heart, face to face We are a family Swimming creatures. Day six, God created animals and people. People's names were Adam and Eve. Day seven, God rested. Now, boys and girls, I want you to play with me. Dear God, thank you for making a world with so many wonderful things. Amen. Abraham did 
day. Genesis 17 verse 4 and 5 As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Let's sing a song. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons. Father Abraham, I am one of them, so are you. So let us praise the Lord, left arm. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons. Father Abraham, I am one of them, so are you. So let us praise the Lord Christ's leg. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons. Father Abraham, I am one of them, so are you. So let us praise the Lord left leg. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons. Father Abraham, I am one of them, so are you. So let us praise the Lord. Friends, greetings to you all. My topic today is who is Jesus? Many people have heard about Jesus. Some believe that he is a good man. Others that he was a prophet. Still others that he was a founder of a new faith. And others accept, accept him as their Savior and Lord. Even during the time that he used to live on earth, there were various opinions about this man. So, who is he? Who is Jesus? In John 1, he's the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. In John 3, he's the great teacher. In John 4, he's the water of life, which after drinking, you will never thirst again. In John 5, he's the Son of God and the Son of Man. He will raise the dead. He is also the great physician. In John 6, he is the provider of eternal life for those that believe in him. He is also the bread of life. In John 7, he is our brother and friend. In John 8, he is the great and wise judge and our sin bearer. In John 10, he is the true and good shepherd. In John 11, he is the resurrection and the life. Those that believe in him, even if they die, will have eternal life. In John 12, he is the king of Israel. In John 13, he is the son of man. In John 14, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can have access to God the Father except through Him. No one can have eternal life except through Him. No one has truth unless if they have Jesus. In John 15, He is the true vine and we are branches and we can only produce fruits as long as we are connected to the vine. In John 16, he is the one who overcame the world. In John 17, he is the creator. He created the heavens and the earth. In John 18, he is the lamb that was slain for our sins. In John 20, he is the risen savior. He was dead, but is alive forevermore. In John 21, he is the great restorer and redeemer. Friends, I want to invite you to this man, Jesus. He fits in every situation. If you are weary and have lived, call upon him. Are you looking for answers in your life? 
call upon him and he will give you the answers. Friends, this Jesus is the world's greatest need of our time. We need him every day of our life. I invite you to accept his call to you. God bless you. God. My topic is Never run away from God. My sermon is coming from the book of Jonah. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach to the wicked people of Nineveh. But Jonah went to Tashish. God was not happy, so he sent a great wind. Jonah was thrown into the sea and he was swallowed by a big fish for three days and three nights. Never run away from God. If God tells you to do something, you must obey him. If God tells you to go and preach, you must go and preach the word of God. May God bless you all. Thank you. Good morning, boys and girls. Today, I will be sharing with you the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. So, this story comes from Daniel 3. So you will recall that in Daniel 2, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, had a strange dream of a big statue of a man, head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly of bronze, legs of iron, and feet a mixture of iron and clay. And so um, the, the story that God was trying to show King Nebuchadnezzar in this dream was that he was not going to rule forever. Eventually, other kingdoms were going to rule over, and then... Um, until the end of time, of course, where the kingdom of heaven comes to reign the earth. And so in Daniel 3, King Nebuchadnezzar decided to make a statue similar to the one he saw in the dream, except the whole thing was going to be made out of gold. And so what King Nebuchadnezzar was trying to say here was that um, was that he didn't really believe what God had said was what, what God had told him in Daniel 2, and that he thought he was going to reign the world forever. And so King Nebuchadnezzar was so proud of himself and so full of himself for making that statue that he decided that he was going to make a decree that everyone in Babylon, when they hear music coming from the palace, are going to stop what they're doing and bow down to this big golden statue. And so one day when the music was playing, everyone stopped what they were doing and started to bow down to the statue. And then the king's advisors realizes that there were three people who did not bow down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and immediately informed the king. And the king was mad and said, bring me these three. And so when Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego got to the king, the king said, is this true that you three um, are deciding not to bow down to my statue? And they said, yes, your majesty. And king, um, king Nebuchadnezzar was very mad. He said, I'm going to give you one ch more chance. Bow down, worship my golden statue, or I'll throw you into the fiery furnace. Then who will save me from? Then who will save me? You from my hand. Sorry. And then um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't even want a second chance, and they replied saying, um, "Do we really have to defend ourselves and defend ourselves in this matter?" And they said, um, "We will not bow down and worship your um, your golden statues." And even if we are thrown into the fiery furnace, our God will save us. And even if he doesn't, we still will not bow down to your golden statues or worship your idols. And King Nebuchadnezzar was so mad. He turned up the fiery furnace seven times hotter. And then he, he commanded the, big, the strongest soldiers to come and take up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace. A few moments later, King Nebuchadnezzar sprang up to his feet. He said, he asked one of his advisors, weren't there three men that we threw into the fiery furnace? And he said, certainly, Your Majesty. And then he said, well, why do I see four men, um, four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth one looks like a son of the gods? And so King Nebuchadnezzar went to the opening of the fiery furnace and said, and said, um, and called out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out, come here, come see me. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fiery furnace. Their bodies were not burnt, not, not, um, nor were any hairs of their head burnt. 
and their, bo their clothes were not sorts, and they didn't even smell like fire or smoke. King Nebuchadnezzar realized here that he was wrong, and that um, the God of heaven um, is the real God. And then he made a decree that, ev um, that everyone in Babylon shall now serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And anyone who is going to talk against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces, and their houses turned into rubble. So, what a powerful story, boys and girls. Here are some things you can learn from this story. So, first, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were young youth men, yet they still, um, yet they still um, stood up for what they believed. And another thing that you, can, um, that you can learn here is, still though we're young, we can, still, we can still defend something that we believe in. Like, for example, if you're at school, you could help defend those who are being bullied, or be friends with someone who doesn't have any friends. Um, there's a Bible verse that I like in Proverbs, found in Proverbs 20, verse 11. It says, even small children are known by their actions. So is their conduct, really pure and upright. So, boys and girls, it is my prayer that you, that you stand up for what you believe in and that you can lean on Jesus for all of your troubles that one, so that once when the evil days come, you may be able to lean on God and then you will be grounded, upright to God. And have a wonderful day. Amen. Family. We are a family. Our hearts are bound together in love.